Where do you store your properties that are meant to be secret? You can put them on a command line argument or in an environment variable, but I often forget that they're there. Spring Boot 2.4 gave us the ability to import additional configuration files, and we'll use that today to store some secret values. I think we should take a trip today. Do you want to go with me? Where are we going? The greatest place on the internet, production. Who's ready? Let's do it. To get started with the new application, we're going to head over to start.spring.io. And before we fill in some of these details, let me tell you a little bit about the application that we're going to build. So I'm working on another demo that connects to a Notion account. So Notion is one of my favorite tools on the web. Uh, it just allows me to create almost everything and manage everything in my life from what videos I'm producing to articles I'm writing, courses I'm creating, et cetera. So in that tutorial, you need to have some secret keys, things like your authentication token and the database ID. Database ID is not as secret, but for this example, we'll say it is. Um, we don't want those credentials getting out into the world. So when we check this in in a public repo somewhere, we don't want to check those values in. And again, as I mentioned in the open, there are ways to get around this using configure uh, command line arguments or environment variables. But today I want to show you another option. So here we are on start.spring.io. We're going to have a Maven project. We're going to use Java. We're going to use the latest stable version, which is 2.6.4. We save dev.danvega. The artifact is Notion Secrets. And we'll leave the description, the package the same. Packaging is jar, and the Java version is 17, of course. And let's go ahead and just choose the web dependency. We're going to use that for something. We'll go ahead and generate our project. We will download it, unzip it, and open it in my favorite IDE, IntelliJ. All right, here we are in our application. And the first thing that I want to do is to expose some configuration properties so that anybody who's using this application could come in and say, um, hey, I want to go, to go ahead and configure some things on the Notion API. So like the API URL or the Notion API version. And you see, these keys aren't available to us right now because we haven't set these up yet. So let's go ahead and set these up and expose these as configuration properties. So to do this, we're gonna create a new class. Um, we're actually gonna create a record here and we're gonna call this Notion config properties. And again, we're on Java 17, so we can go ahead and take advantage of records here. So I'm gonna choose a record. And what we're going to have here as properties is the API URL, the API version, the auth token, and the database ID. Now, if you're not familiar with Notion and you don't know what these are used for, don't worry about that. The we're gonna I'm actually going to come out with a video on connecting to Notion. So if you're interested in that, make sure you're subscribed to the channel. That should be coming up very soon. Uh, but for this purpose, just know that these are some properties that we want to expose as configuration properties that someone could go ahead and fill in in something like application.properties. So the first thing that we do is we mark this with add configuration properties, and we're going to give it a prefix. So this says, hey, when you're defining this in, say, application.properties, this is going to be notion.api URL, notion.api version, et cetera. So right away, IntelliJ is telling us, hey, uh, the Spring Boot configuration annotation processor is not configured. It's going to open us, open us up right into some documentation where you can grab the snippet for Maven or Gradle. So I'm using Maven. I'm going to open the POM file, just come in here and drop this, save it, and reload Maven. Now this should be okay. Now we have one more thing to fix, and this is basically saying, hey, you need to go ahead and enable configuration properties on your application. So we'll do that over here, and we'll say at enable configuration properties, and then we'll just give it a specific class since this is the only one that we're working with. Okay, so now that we've set that up, we are able to go ahead and build this. Let's build the project. 
And I want to build this because I want to show you here in the target folder, if we look at the classes and under metainf, you'll now see this spring-configuration-metadata. And this is the information that is related to the properties that we just configured. So now we know that there is a Notion API URL, an API version, an auth token, and a database ID. And so this file right here that was generated is what um, IntelliJ is going to use or any other IDE is going to use to help us kind of give suggestions here when we're working with properties. So as I start to type Notion out, it's going to read that metadata and go, oh, under the Notion uh, key, here are some of the different properties that you can go ahead and set. So that's really our, our first task is we were able to set up some configuration properties for Notion. All right, the next thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and set up each of these properties. So the Notion uh, API URL is going to be HTTPS uh, api.notion.com. Uh, the API version is going to be 2021 -0. 16, not that any of these values really matter for this specific tutorial. Um, the auth token, uh, we're going to say this is secret. And the database ID is also secret. Okay, so now we have each of those properties. I want to just set up a quick controller that exposes all of them so we can hit an endpoint and see what those values looks like. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new class and we will call this the notion controller. And this is going to be a rest controller. It's going to have a request mapping of slash notion. And inside of here, we're going to just create a single endpoint, um, which is going to be a git mapping. So this is going to return a map of string string, and we'll just say print all uh, props. And what we want to do is we need to, let's go ahead and just say return null for now. And so what we need to do first is we need to get our configuration properties injected into the controller. So I'm going to say private final notion configuration properties. And we'll call this notion config. And so what we need to do is we need to add some constructor injection here. So now that bean will be injected into this controller class for us. So now we'll have access to it. So now we can say something like, let's go ahead and return a map.of, and we're gonna set each of these values. All right, so that should be it for our controller. If we go ahead and run our application and we head over to localhost 8080 slash notion, we can see our four values in here. So we have API URL version, auth token, and database ID. All right, so the big problem with this is of course, these two values right here that I want to be somewhat secret I don't want to be storing these in application.properties. This is a file that's going to get checked into Git uh, when we push it to wherever our repo is, uh, GitHub. You know, this, this information is going to be public now and people can see that information. So we don't want to store this here. So let's go ahead and comment those out. One thing we could do is we can come up here and go to um, run and edit configurations. And we can add some command line arguments. So we can say dash dash notion dot auth token is equal to one, two, three, four, five, six. And then we can also say notion dot database ID is equal to something like that. So now if we go ahead and hit apply, and OK, and rerun our application, and head back over to the browser and refresh. Now we can see that those values are getting picked up from the command line. So this is a really good start, because now we've taken those properties out of our application.properties file. We put them in a command line argument, and 
now what we can do is we can override those values when whenever we push this to production somewhere. We can use, say, an environment variable. Uh, a lot of different hosts give you that ability to do that. So I like, you know, obviously this is a good approach. Sometimes I forget that those values are there or, you know, you have to set up a readme and say, hey, whoever's running this project, make sure you add these values there. So I, I want to take a look at just another option in the tool belt, not necessarily better, but um, just another option that you have. So we're going to go ahead and right here and talk about something that was added in Spring Boot 2.4, and that's the ability to import additional configuration. So with earlier versions of Spring Boot, it was pretty hard to import additional properties or YAML files beyond the standard application.properties and application.yaml. Um, you could use something like spring.config.additional location property, but there were some quirks and some things that didn't work really well. With Spring Boot 2.4, you could use something called spring.config.import to basically say, hey, I want to pull in a specific file. Um, and you can even combine that with something like a activate on profile properties. So you could say that these were only specific to, say, developer or something like that. So I want to take a look at that today. And I also want to take a look at something you, something else you can do with it. So this is spring.config.import. So we're going to import something. And I'm going to import a file called secrets.properties. Um, what I'm also going to do is prefix this with optional. So what this is going to say is it's basically not going to fail over if this file doesn't exist. And uh, if you've ever done any work in the JavaScript world, so I've done a lot of work in, in JavaScript projects in the last few years, and there is a similar pattern there using something called .env. And if there's an env file there, it's going to look for environment variables there. So what we're saying is, hey, this file I'm going to use is just going to be for those secrets. So we can say secrets.properties. But the good thing is, is if it doesn't see it there, it's optional. It's not going to cause the um, cause everything to fail. And so now what we've done is let's go ahead and remove our command line arguments. And so now what we've done here is we said, optionally, I want you to include the secrets.properties. Here are two properties that we are OK with being public. Here are two p properties that we'd like to keep secret. Let's go ahead and run this. And we'll go ahead and refresh this. And there's our values. Now one thing we can do is we can come down into our git ignore and say, let's go ahead and ignore secrets.properties. Right? So now that file is not going to get checked into Git. Nobody's going to be able to see those, but I still have an actual file here in my project that I'm able to work with, and, and this is where I'm going to put my secret values in. This is also a reference point for me later when I want to go push this to production. Like These are all the keys that I need to make sure have matching environment variables on whatever host that uh, I'm pushing this project to. All right, so at the beginning of this video, I mentioned that we were going to go to one of the greatest places ever, and that is production. And that's act exactly what we're going to do now. And the reason I wanted to do this is just to show you um, how we can go ahead and override these values with something like an environment variable. So again, secrets.properties is not going to get checked in. This is. So if we don't do anything when we push this to production, then we're going to have problems because we're not going to have those two key and values in our application, and we need them to make it work. So I'm actually going to be deploying to uh, Heroku today. You can really deploy this to anywhere. But I know in Heroku, I'm going to have to add this system.properties file just so that I can go ahead and say, hey, the Java runtime version that I'm going to be using is 17. So what I'm going to do is commit this over to Git. Uh, and let's go ahead and push this up to GitHub. And through the magic of video editing, we will be there.
So here is this project over on GitHub. Uh, we have Spring Boot Secrets. You can go ahead and check this out. And this has everything that we've kind of worked through so far. And the reason I pushed it over to GitHub is because on Heroku, Heroku gives us an opportunity to just connect to a GitHub repo and use that as the source for our application. So I'm gonna come in here and create a new app. And I'm gonna go ahead and call this uh, Spring Boot Secrets. And go ahead and create app. And we're going to use connect to GitHub. And again, if you're not familiar with uh, Heroku, uh, don't worry about it. It's more or less about just setting those environment variables. You could do this in any other uh, environment where you're pushing this to production. So I'm going to connect to GitHub and we're going to look for Spring Boot Secrets. And there it is. So we'll connect to that. So we will want to manually deploy because we haven't, we're not going to push anything new to this, but we have to come back and go over to settings first. And right here, we want to re reveal config vars. So our configuration variables, this is where we're going to set those values that we had in the secrets property. So what we're going to do is we're going to say notion.auth.token dash token. And we'll say this is secret one, two, three, four. And we'll just go ahead and add that. And then we'll say notion dot database ID. And we'll just say nine, 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 nine. Okay, so now that we've added those two variables, we should have everything we need. So what we're gonna do is just head over to our overview. Um, uh, I'm sorry, we're gonna go over to deploy and we're gonna actually manually deploy this. So we're gonna deploy the master branch and once this kicks off, we'll be able to see a log here. Let's view the log. So we can see that that properties helped us. Uh, it installed Java 17 for us. Uh, it's doing its Maven install, pulling down all of the uh, repositories that it needs on all of the projects. Looks like it's finishing up here. Done. And now we have a project. So now we can go ahead and open this up. And if we go to this and then the endpoint was Notion, the first time it loads, it's actually gonna take a little bit, um, but then as you see in subsequent loads, it'll go pretty fast. So there are properties. You can see next time I reload it, it's pretty fast. So we have our API URL and our version, and then the auth token and the database ID are coming from those environment variables that we set on our host. So that is a way to override those secret properties that we had in that new file, that secret.properties. So nothing terribly exciting, but I just kind of wanted to point it out and mention it that there is another way to go ahead and pull in properties like this, and that's using this spring.config.import. Remember, if you don't think it's going to, if there's a chance that it's not going to be there, you can use that optional keyword. And while the application will start up, you're still going to run into problems because you don't have those properties and you're, you're going to need those. But um, that optional gives it gives it a, a way to be optional. Um, and then we're just pulling in a new file. And, and this file is now something I can basically put into my gitignore. And I know that this is not going to get pushed to GitHub. Uh, so just something you can do. And then if you wanted to, you could put some checks and balances on, say, GitHub to make sure that like this file doesn't get checked in and, and think, you know, more things along those lines. So I hope this was super useful. I hope this is maybe something you didn't know you could do. Um, if not, again, you could always just use command line arguments or environment variables. I find that I just kind of forget that they're there. And I like having this like actual physical file here with these secrets in it. So uh, if you found value in this video, please do me a favor and give me a thumbs up, uh, subscribe to the channel. If you want to see, if you have any questions about what we covered today, please leave me a comment below and I will see you in the next video. As always, friends, happy coding.